So Splatoon just had an amazing lore drop. Man, I'm not even joking. It's like something that you probably wouldn't think that you would hear from or see about. And luckily we have Rasikis. They actually literally translated the whole entire thing. It's a lot. Like it's not just a little bit. It is a lot. I think it's almost close to about probably about like 16 pages. Yeah, 16 pages. So they said Splatoon 3 until now and from here on. Uh, basically, I have translated the new Splatoon 3 developer interview in Fedmitsu magazine into English. So they did the whole entire thing. I'll have the links down below, I promise, in the beginning. Uh, so we're going to get into this. I'm not going to read the whole entire thing because it is very, very, very long. But I will go into certain things that I thought were really cool. And as you guys know, also on top of that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please, man, we are trying to get up to 15K, so please subscribe. So what parts should and should not be changed? So this is basically uh, Nogami, uh, Inoa, I'm gonna be butchering names here, and Sato, programming um, director. So basically they sat down with an interviewer and they were talking about it. So six months have passed since Splatoon 3's release. It sold 3.45 million units within three days of its launch and 10 million units worldwide within the first three months. That's actually insane. How do you feel about the sales so far? Um, you know, honestly, I'm quite happy that so many people have picked up the game and we ha we've had a major goal of establishing the relatively young IP Splatoon as a standard title. And I think we've gotten the first step toward that goal, Nogami. At the time, the game's release, many people had been playing, playing since S2, but around the end of the year, many people picked up Splatoon for the first time. I feel that the age range of Splatoon community is broadening. Saito, it, it makes me glad to see that even those around me who have not played the series before are getting enthusiastic about it. While there's a growing number of S of new players with S3, there is there's also been some harsh opinions about the game's updates from existing players. This is something that I think is a very good criticism. Funny that they brought this up here. Due to the popularity of the Nintendo Switch, we've been getting feedback from users of all ages with different gaming experiences. I wonder how much they, they've acted like Americans. It may take some time for us to consider the content and implement uh, updates, but we will do our best to respond to players' enthusiasm as much as possible. So they are listening. That, that's one good thing to hear. Nogami, S3 is a new game, so we're putting as much effort into the new parts of it as we are into the parts that shouldn't be changed. Interesting. All in order to make the game interesting to as many people as possible. On our end, we're go doing our best, but it's difficult to respond to all the feedback. We have two years of updates planned, so we will continue development while taking care of the health of our staff. Wow. So they said, basically, Nogami said, I'm not overworking people for, for your guys' enjoyment. And to be fair, they did say that they have more stuff planned. Each update has been better than the last. It just feels longer than it has to be because of how they went about it. I get the impression that the balancing changes in 3 are not as heavy compared to those from when S2 was released. Is there any difference in the intent of these balancing changes? Sato, there is no difference in our intentions when it comes to balancing, and we've been consistently making adjustments to make the content more like the first Splatoon game. Ah. I, that, I say that all the time, man. I feel it. I, I definitely gameplay wise. I feel it. As many people are attached to their weapons, we're carefully not to suddenly make them feel totally different. The only thing I'd say is that we made a lot of big changes to S2 at the time of its release. So the post launch adjustments we made to make it easier to play and more like Splatoon 1 ended up being big changes. Therefore, from around the time when the final Splatfest in S2 ended, from S2, we gradually prepared for S3. So they've been working on S3 for a, a good amount of time, actually, from, from, that, from the point where that ended from the final fest, which makes sense because they got their answer. However, there were many new elements that could not properly determine how to adjust until after the user base 
had spent time using them for this reason. In S3, we've made changes to many things at a time after being able to sufficiently evaluate it, such as the adjustments made in version 3.1.0 at the end of March. Is that the dreaded MPU? No, 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 no. That, that's not, that wouldn't be around then. Let me know in the comments down below. Indeed, so far, weapons like Crab Tank have undergone significant changes in how it's assessed by the players. So your policy is to consider the best balancing adjustments based on such assessments. Oh, this is gonna be good, man. Nogami, that's right. Some mains and specials take some time, some getting used to, but once you do, you'll be able to use them to their full potential. So did they want people to get used to Crab Tank? That actually would make a lot of sense in my opinion that they made it a lot like wanted people to get used to it rather than nerfing it because it is the newest special. It kind of took a while and I feel like they made the right adjustment and they did the right, possibly the right thing for competitive. We're seeing it right now, so who knows exactly. But I, I think that they might have made the right change. And then when someone says this weapon is strong when used like this, the way other players use it may also change. I think they're talking about competitive and casual. For this reason, we make adjustments while taking into account the long-term changes in the community as a whole. So I think that what they're talking about here is trying not to nerf things too hard based on competitive and then making them absolutely useless in the main game. I think that's possibly what they could be looking at. Maybe. The reason for adding stringers and splatanas because they're cool, which is the best answer that they could have given in my opinion. I'm gonna be very honest with you. I think the fact that they've acknowledged that these weapons are actually really cool is the part of the reason I'm just like, yo, the Splatanas, the Stringers, they've made some very great new main weapons. So now please tell us about the concept behind Splatoon 3. You know, 3 was one of the core parts of our overall concept. In games and movies, the third film in a series is often referred to as the accumulation of the series. Oh, oh, but I believe it also has a celebratory appeal to it. This celebratory um, festive atmosphere of S3 is also suitable for expressing chaos, another main theme of three. We also mix various uh, three elements together. The Surmami in Surmami Rogan, I'm sorry, known as Deep Cut in English. Oh, Deep Cut, okay. It's a combination of Deep Cut, and the English word three, red like Surrey in Japan, and me, which is another reading of Kenjo for three in JP. For other elements, if we could fit a three motive in it, odds were, were high, we'd use it. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Sorry about that. If you want to go through it again, you, it's, it's there for you to, to do that. There sure are a lot of three motives in, in the game. One thing you have adopted for the game is a seasonal system. How did that come about? I actually want to hear this one. A seasonal system wasn't something we were thinking of doing from the very start. Wow. So this was a, I want to know at what point did they change this decision? I think that like, personally, I think this was a marketing decision by Nintendo. I don't think that this may have been the, like the actual devs of Splatoon. I think that maybe the higher ups were like, yeah, I think we should do like monthly updates instead of what you were doing before. I don't know. I could be wrong, like just entirely, but what do you think? As the number of players increases, the purpose of playing Splatoon grows as well. We wanted to add more things that go up as players continue to play the game, not just a rank that changes based on wins and losses. So for this, we thought that something that changes over a period of time and fits the world's Splatoon is fashion. And this led into the creation of the catalog system. Okay. But yeah, Splatoon is very, fashion is everything about it. And I think this game kind of does a great job about it. There is the conversation of aesthetic. Some people will say that they love Splatoon 2's aesthetic over Splatoon 3, but there's nothing that you can do about that. The current form of the catalog was created with the idea that as a catalog is updated, new items will be added to the Splatoon world as time progresses. This makes it easy to talk about periods of time in Splatoon and creates a more festive atmosphere. Some people get upset about it because of the fact that you can't get the gear easily. 
or you can't get the item easily and you have to go back or like keep on doing gotcha to get it so there is also a bunch of talking about talking points about that one more characteristic of s3 is that the stages feel more long and narrow compared to s2 was it a, a concise decision to structure the stages like this this is about the hallway stages Woo! that's a that's a crazy one i'm not gonna lie to you to ask them about this so saito the shape of the stages isn't something we decided on ahead of time wow not just s3 but throughout the series what we've kept in mind when creating stages is what kind of play and ingenuity can be created in the characteristic parts of the stages in addition we also create the layouts needed for each rule set the optimum shape of the of this layout will change influenced by the main and special weapons that appear in each game can they please explain what they mean by that for this game genuinely or like i wish they would have said maybe it was like for the you know the stampers or the just maybe zip caster maybe the specials i wish they went a little bit more in detail about that because i would love to know what weapons they're talking about exactly i would love to know that I see, so the shape of the stages are designed to match the weapons and so on. Speaking of weapons, in some matches, it feels easy to get pitted up against weapons that are the same class as your own. What was your intention here? I wish they went in more in depth about what we were just talking about. Saito, the matchmaking system of S2 did not divide the teams well in some ways. Yes, we, we all know this. This was the dreaded getting multiple of the same weapons on one team. It still happens in S3, but there's not much they can do. So this time we introduced a new matchmaking system. However, I feel that we need to continue to pursue the balance between making sure there is, there is no bias toward one type of weapon. Shooter privilege or shooter whatever propaganda. I have no idea. You choose what you want to say and providing a fresh experience each time the player plays the game. So the current state of matchmaking system isn't perfect, and we plan to continue making adjustments to it in the future. I hope they do it sooner than later. Please, man, do it sooner. Please do it sooner. The Stringers and, and Splatanas are new weapon classes in this game. Why were these weapons chosen? Inno, well, because they're cool. I, that's the biggest reason these weapons are here. They're the coolest things ever. I've been using the wiper a little bit on my stream. By the way, come through to uh, Ken Knows It on Twitch. If you haven't already, please do it. And the, I I would have to say that wiper one is extremely fun. It's a very fun weapon. One of the reasons is that I had the this idea of a character with a bow standing in a rigged landscape. And that became part of the first promotional trailer. So that was just it. That landscape thing was just literally just about the promotional trailer. There was nothing more to that, which is very interesting. I know it ties into somewhat with the story mode, but I thought there would be a lot more with that whole desert scheme thing. When we implemented the dualies, we chose them because it's platoon two and there's two guns. Wow. Okay. That, I mean, that makes sense. We like to have things like that are easy to understand, but of course it was not only about how cool it looked, but also about whether or not it could actually be used as a weapon. Interesting. I can see that, I, I get that, wow. I get the impression that neither of these new weapons are all that easy to use. I, I yeah, <laughs> I definitely agree with the Stringer. As long as we are creating a new class of weapons, we want to create an experience that is unique to it. As a result, it's necessary for them to feel different, differ, differently from the conventional weapons. I think that's part of the the weapon's individuality and charm. And that's something we aim for. That makes sense, definitely, with the Splatanas. And, and even with Wiper and Reflux, they definitely did that. I, I, I would have to say that those weapons are some of the coolest weapons in the game that they've added. Nogami, the most important thing to create a pleasant moment when using the weapon, such as hitting the target with all three shots with a Stringer, or using Splatana to kill with a Charge Slash at just the right moment. I have the impression that many of the special weapons are based on motives of Splatoon 1. Did you incorporate some of the items from S1 as a culmination of the series? You know, from a, an artistic point of view, the concept of Splatoon is to portray the counterculture of the youth. Therefore, we decided on the direction of Splatoon 3 to be something that had the feeling of being a counter 
to counterculture and to give off the impression that S1 had yet as something that ha has developed further. Wow. I, I find it interesting that they were like, they, they like these drastic changes in Splatoon. And it's something that like is a little bit different from, I guess, other devs when it comes to it, but they like these drastic changes. Sato, since many uh, people started with S2, we also wanted to give them a taste of some of the elements that did not appear in that game. However, considering the time that has passed since S1 and keeping the culture of Splatlands in mind, we thought that the special weapons of S1 must have been modified and made more flashy. So we decided to introduce those modified versions in S3. Talking about, I'm guessing, Tri-Strike, tri, -Strike, tri and then on top of that, Kraken. Which, in my opinion, I think that's that's a really good point. I, I do think that this probably also puts a nail in the coffin of them adding anything else for like a, a like Splatoon 1 for real with like just by itself. Maybe they'll add the comp campaign to Splatoon 3. That would be kind of a, a big deal in my opinion. But I, I guess they just want people to have the experience and the taste of what it was like back in the day. It's kind of crazy saying that that was back in the day. And so we also have how did tricolor battles come about? Sato with the three in the name from the start, we wanted to have a three color battle. However, if we simply increase the number of teams while sticking with the same standard turf war rules, we expected various issues to occur, such as just one team being attacked too intensively. On the other hand, since S2, we had been thinking about creating asymmetrical battles in which the attackers and the defenders would be divided into two sides. We thought we could solve the problem by mixing the two and thus tricolors battles were born. So yeah, they, they're saying that, wow, I, I guess there wasn't an option for 4v4v4. Maybe they, maybe they just were like, nah, it doesn't make sense. And that's why they did this instead. That actually, I wish they would talk about that just a little bit more. Nogami, since it requires more balancing and adjustments than the regular two color battles, we decided to release one stage for tricolor battles at each Splatfest. I think it's good that we've been able to reduce differences with each Splatfest as a result of that. And now this is a, a very interesting article. As I said, it's very long, it's 16 pages. If you guys would like to go through the rest of it, you can. Those are the parts that I kind of found interesting in myself. Uh, I'm not the biggest lore person, as you guys know, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that has a, like lore in here, just talking about different aspects and talking about things that are coming in the future, like the side order. They didn't really go into that much of a detail. Maybe I'll do another video on that. But let me know what you guys think about this. Again, I think that there's a lot of aspects here, especially for Splatoon, that really are definitely eye opening when it comes to their development process for Splatoon. There's a lot of thought that went into a lot of these things. I wish they should, could have asked about the car on the stick. That would have been hilarious. The car on the stick has to be talked about. Like, I really wish that somebody could speak to them about the car on the stick and the poles. I feel like they did not let the interviewer ask that question. But let me know what you guys think. This is actually a very cool thing. Give it a look if you guys can. Also, I said, uh, Rasikis, they did a lot of work into translating this. So make sure to give them a look and check them out on Twitter or on their YouTube channel. A lot of you guys probably know them already. But I'm going to catch you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so we can hit 15K. I'm going to catch you guys later and have a great day.